There aren't many problems that could be solved quicker than with a kick to the face, and that is a proven fact several times over in today's movie, Roadhouse. Yeah, featuring the ever-sexy piece of man meat that is Patrick Swayze, and the arguably more sexy piece of man meat, Sam Elliott. Damn, dude, I did not know that you looked this good back in the day. Because today, we live by three rules. Number one, never underestimate your movie and expect a lot of hairspray. Number two, take it one scene at a time. And number three, try to make people laugh. And now, let's immediately break all of our rules because this is Red Eye Reviews. We start our movie with a straight banger of a song. Oh my god, who is ready to bounce now? I'm not. Screw that shit. No, I'll just have a drink, but Patrick Swayze looks ready. I think it's time for you gentlemen to leave. And he is. Meet Dalton. He is the best bouncer both sides of the Mississippi. (laughs) Holy shit, that dude stabbed him. Stab somebody! But Patrick plays it cool. He throws the guy out. He's got bigger fish to fry. And in this universe, bouncers are like, they're like superstars. Everybody knows about them. Everybody wants to be one. And they sleep around a lot. We meet this guy. He shows up. He asks if he can hire Dalton to help clean up his club as it has become quite an aggressive little rundown joint. So Dalton agrees. But he's cool, so he does it all vague-like. I've got your plane ticket right here. I don't fly. Well, when do I expect you? I'll get there. So when will you get there? Hey, man, I move with the buffalo. Huh? I'll get there at a tumbleweed's pace, bruh. Yeah, you gotta be more specific. T- tomorrow, man. I'll- God, God damn it. Let me just let me be cool for a second, okay? I'm Patrick Swayze. So Dalton packs up his shit and gives his car to a random guy on the street. Yo. Keep it, it's yours. Hmm? Man, Dalton, if only you had a YouTube channel and you filmed yourself doing these random acts of kindness, you would be a millionaire. But then he takes off in his other car, a much cooler Mercedes, and he heads to the new town. Right off the bat, you're a dick. You double parked, Patrick. Come on, buddy. You're better than that. But he heads inside the new business, the Double Deuce. And you know, it's not amazing. Kind of reminds you of that bar in the Blues Brothers. It's got a lot of, uh, you know, character. But it does have a pretty badass band led by a guy named Jeff Healy, who was a blind guitarist from Canada. Yeah. Blind dude learned how to play guitar when he was three years old. The guy was a goddamn legend. I could spend the entire video talking about him, but shit is about to hit the fan. Yeah, a big brawl breaks out, and that's pretty common these days at the old Double D. But Dalton goes, he buys himself a new car... And don't worry, nothing happened to the baller Mercedes, but in his experience, people will mess with his car in this profession, and he would rather that happen to another vehicle. He also finds himself a room to rent at this local farmer's barn. You honest? Yes, sir. Expect me to believe that? (laughs) No, sir. He's a real stand-up guy, and he heads to his first day of work. All you have to do is follow three simple rules. One, never underestimate your opponent. Two, take it outside. And three, be nice. And those rules will be loosely followed throughout the entire movie, but broken entirely, you know, when whenever he decides he wants to do that. But during this time, Swayze also fires several people who he doesn't think will cut it. Morgan, you're out of here. What the fuck are you talking about? You're out too. We're selling booze here, not drugs. Here he's costing you about 150 a night. So? So consider it severance pay. And after a hard day's work, Swayze is exhausted. He needs to repower his sex appeal through interpretive dance. And the dance is so goddamn powerful, it's it's turning everybody on. I'm hot and bothered. The farmer's hot and bothered. This old dude across the water wants in on the action. Patrick, that's some powerful shit. Also, fun fact. 
Patrick Swayze's fame and sexiness caused a lot of problems during filming. A pickup truck containing a group of middle-aged blonde women attempted to drive right up to his trailer on set. During a shot later in the movie, a raft, uh, like literally a raft of Swayze-loving ladies sailed by and ruined the shot. And one of the female extras who was playing a waitress was too busy staring at our boy that she walked straight into somebody else and spilled a whole tray of coffee on them. So the set was a bit of a madhouse, but you know, this movie is... Roadhouse. The next day at work, he is greeted by that bartender he fired, along with some goons. Turns out he is the cousin of the richest man in town named Wesley. Yeah, that old man who wanted to bang Swayze, he's the richest guy in town. They threaten him, saying that they won't deliver the bar any alcohol unless he hires the cousin back. Swayze could give two shits about this guy because, you know, he's cool as hell. And they pull a knife on our boy. <laughs> that it, Dalton? You scared to fight me? You big, bad Dalton. Not only does he dodge it, but he punches his dude so goddamn hard, his nose starts bleeding before he ever gets touched. But during the melee, he does actually get cut, you know. So he heads on over to the hospital where he meets Dr. Elizabeth Clay. Do you enjoy pain? Pain don't hurt. And a little bubbling romance, you know, kind of starts here. But back with our henchmen... Wesley is not too thrilled that Swayze is around and kind of fighting back, you know? So he summons the anti-Swayze. It's like the evil Superman version of him. Like, hair and all. <laughs> look at that. Don't take the glasses off. If you take the glasses off, he loses the whole look. But, you know, from this shot, it's, yeah, it's pretty close. But also, while out on the town, Dalton learns that our rich Wesley takes 10% of everybody's profits in order to help the town grow which is total bullshit, you know? He's kind of like the head of a little mafia here, but instead of Italians, it's a bunch of rednecks. Which, when they're drunk, I would argue more dangerous than an Italian. But Swayze senses this town might have a problem too big for just himself, you know? So he calls his friend Wade Garrett. I honestly did not think anybody could upstage Swayze, but damn, boy, you are giving him a run for his money. Oof. Then we do get a bit of a time jump as we see the Double D has improved quite a bit. There's no more chicken wire, there's nicer clientele, we get mother flipping Keith David as a bartender. So excited he's on board, I hope he's in a lot of this movie. What's the story? Whiskey's running low. And that's a wrap on Keith David. Yeah, <laughs> he, he gets one line, but ugh, what a line it was, sir. Later that night, Swayze's charm has officially gotten Dr. Ladyfriend to come over to his place. Oh, oh my. And then they get down and dirty up against a brick wall, which there is no goddamn way anybody is comfortable right now. Up against a wall, maybe. Up against a wall with texture? You're kidding yourself. Also, fun fact, this actress is named Kelly Lynch. And she is married to a guy named Mitch Glazer, who is a fantastic writer and a really good friend of another actor, one of my favorites, Bill Murray. So according to Kelly Lynch, every time Bill Murray watches this movie, he will call his buddy Mitch Glazer and tease him about that time Patrick Swayze seduced his wife, which is a total Bill Murray thing to do. But the next day, while out getting the booze shipment, Patrick gets in another fight with Wesley's goons, and he is outnumbered, but out front. A double douche. You got a skinny little runt named Dalton working here. I know you. Yeah, like I said, bouncers are rock stars. Everybody somehow knows about him. Everybody wants to be him. And all of us are a little hot and bothered, if I'm being honest. But Wade steps in, he helps Dalton fight all of these bros off, and later that day, they go out with the doc. I fucking knew it. <laughs> Bye. I'm alive and well in Tennessee. I would love to see somebody try this move on anybody else. This is Sam Elliott. This dude is suave as hell. He could barely pull off this weird face-touching move. But later that day, we see the auto shop next to the Double D has been burned down. And we all know who is at fault. Because inside the bar, Wesley is there to intimidate everybody. 
Ask for a little contribution to improve the town. Everybody digs deep except for him. After a very seductive dance by his lady, where I cannot show it to you. If if I want my channel to stay on YouTube, I, I can only show you this. That's as close as you're going to get, but just assume it's, you know, it's about like that. So Wesley's own personal, like, greasier version of Swayze fights several bouncers. Then they all threaten Swayze and his friends and leave the bar. But it does not stop there, because the next day, he somehow got a hold of a monster truck, and he drives that shit through the local car dealership. Yeah! It's like a big balls moment where he claims the town belongs to him, he made it what it is, King Kong ain't got shit on him, and despite him being the most hated man in town, everybody here seems to be loving the shit out of that monster truck. But this is the final straw for Dalton, so he heads to the barn, he trains like he's never trained before. But while he is hanging out with the doc, the old farmer's house catches fire as well. Yeah, dude, Wesley's a terrible, terrible man. And the anti-Swayze is seen fleeing the scene, which brings us to an epic showdown between the two of them. I used to fuck guys like you in prison. That's an amazing line. <laughs> Fun story. This is Marshall Teague, and he has a great story about this scene itself, so take a look. Went to the theater and sat down and watched Roadhouse. Now, there is a certain part of Roadhouse where I say something a little bit off color. And one of the ladies stood up in the middle of the theater, which was packed, by the way. And she said and pointed at my mother and said, that's Doris Teague's son. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Well, my, mother's, my mother slid under the seat. That poor mom. <laughs> oh, my God. But yeah, Swayze kills his shadow by ripping his goddamn throat out. It's nasty as shit. And then he vows vengeance against Wesley himself. But before he gets a chance to strike, we get a call from Wesley. Wade or Elizabeth. One of them dies. He tells our boy to choose between Wade's life or Dr. Lady's life. And I guess he made the decision for us because later we see poor old Wade has been beaten real bad. So now Swayze has finally decided, he's like, enough's enough. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to get the doc. All three of us are going to leave town. However, him trying to convince her to leave doesn't really work. So on his return to the bar, we see somebody has showed up and finished off old Wade. It's really sad, but it might be for the best. I mean, there was so much goddamn sex appeal between these two. So Swayze takes control. He charges headfirst into the lion's den. That prick. He kills off almost all of the henchmen, including knocking out this hilarious big boy. Yeah, that's uh, not his brightest moment. But now it's just Swayze v. Wesley. The two get in one final heated duel. It's back and forth. But then as Swayze is about to straight Kali Ma this old man's heart out, this happens. It's over! When the hell did all these people show up where did you come from we don't care it's a great moment and we don't really have time to think about it because the cops show up who's gonna tell me what the hell happened here you see anything pete no i didn't see anything you see anything tigger a polar bear fell on me and our movie is over with the lovebird skinny dipping and jeff healy rocking his goddamn heart out if you have never seen roadhouse go watch that shit right now, but not before we move on to Red Eye Reacts. Oh my god, I can smell the hairspray from here. Nobody light a match. Can I talk to you for a minute? I don't know you. No, sorry, I'm busy suturing my knife wound. Yeah, I get, I get stabbed a lot around here. It's, it's pretty normal. If somebody gets in your face and calls you a cocksucker, I want you to be nice. You just called me a jive turkey. No, he did not. He, uh, called you a cocksucker. Yeah. 
Yeah. Right, right, Cornelius? Yeah, yeah. I just called you a cocksucker. Man, everybody in this town wants to bang Patrick Swayze. You could stay, Dalton, if you wanted to. I don't think so. You guys are naked on a roof, that close to a river, at night? Uh, mosquitoes much? No, thank you. Good luck with that. So one thing that makes this movie so goddamn amazing are all of the one-liners. So here are some of my favorites. It used to be a sweet deal. Now it's the kind of place that they sweep up the eyeballs after closing. Hey, vodka rocks. What do you say you and me get nipple to nipple? You know, I heard you had balls big enough to come in a dump truck, but uh, you don't look like much to me. Calling me, sir, is like putting an elevator in an outhouse. Don't belong. Oh, I got married to an ugly woman. Don't ever do that. It just takes the energy right out of you. If it keeps you in the good graces of the church. Ain't it peculiar how money seems to do that very thing? Everybody pay? Does a hobby horse have a wooden dick? This place has a sign hanging over the urinal that says, Don't eat the big white men. I see you found my trophy room, Dalton. The only thing that's missing is your ass. That is everything. Thank you so much for watching. For real, if you haven't seen Roadhouse, go watch that shit. It's so good. There are so many scenes I cannot show you on YouTube. So take a look for yourself. It is awesome. Thank you to everybody who watched. If you liked what you saw, please subscribe to the channel. Like this video. Leave some comments. Tell me your thoughts on this movie. What is your favorite moment from the movie? I'd love to find out. Thank you to the patrons over on the Patreon page because they selected today's movie and I think it was an excellent choice. If you would like the power to vote on future videos, head over to the Patreon page and you can sign up there. That link down below. Merch link down below. Discord channel down below. Thanks again for watching. I will see you next time. And until then, stay happy and stay healthy. I see you found my trophy room, Dalton. The only thing that's missing is your ass.